If your passport is set to expire in the near future, the State Department has an urgent message for you. Renew it now. Over the next year, it expects an influx of remove, renewal requests from Americans, and waiting too long could sideline your travel plans. Mark Murphy is the founder of TravelPulse.com, and he's here to explain why. Great to see you. Great to see you. It's 2006 and 2007. There was a flurry of activity, mm -hmm. and new passports were issued. There's a 10-year window. It's coming due now and all the way into 2017. So what used to be a four-week process is now, right now today, a six-week process, and it could get longer because more and more passports are gonna get reissued. So that's, that's what you have to think about. So if you're planning a trip, get it renewed now. And also remember, six months before your passport expires, you may be denied boarding oh. on a plane to a foreign locale. Why? Because they want your passport to have more than six months before it expires. Otherwise, they can stop you at the gate. I know people that have shown up to get on their plane and have been stopped at the gate, missed their plane, have to go to the passport office the next day and do the fast turnaround in order to get on a plane the following day. So what was behind the flood of passports in 2006 and 2007? Well, there are certain things that have happened, including real ID. So when you talk about real ID, that was, that, that's something that has spurred the states to have to get in compliance within the next two years. So that's creating the demand right now. But if you go back to that time frame, you also know that they changed the rules. So you used to be able to go on a cruise with no passport. You used to be able to travel to Canada with no passport. So they wanted more and more, more Americans to get passports in order to travel to these different locales that were originally okay to enter with just an ID, a, a, a typical driver's license. So all of those things added up to a surge. Mm -hmm. And also just Americans in general, baby boomers, you know, now millennials today, they're all traveling. They want to get overseas. They want to go to places. And you have to have a passport, right? So, so how about first-time passport holders? Sure. Any advice for them? Is it going to be a, even a lengthier process for them? No, I think you can do a couple of things. If you want to pay a little extra money, you can go to an expediter, and they will expedite your passport, and they will do the things like stand in line for you and everything else because you sign over for them to represent you, basically. So I've done that to get passports renewed at the last minute. I've also done that to accelerate initial passports. So those expeditors are great, and you can use them, and they'll usually cost you an extra 100 to $150 on top of the passport fee. Once you get your passport, make sure you do something like global entry, too, because then when you come back into the country, you're not standing in immigration lines. You're going right through, going through customs and out the door, basically in minutes, as opposed to, in some cases, 45 minutes, an hour wait at some uh, uh, airport entry points. Right. All right. Got it. Switching gears now. Yeah. Air Force One is getting ready for a major makeover. Boeing will soon begin work on revamping the decades-old aircraft used to whisk America's presidents around the globe. So how big of a contract is this? How significant is this? Um, in the scope of Boeing, not, not crazy. It's more about prestige, mm -hmm. right? But the reality is Boeing got this contract because nobody else bid on it. People don't realize that. Airbus has a huge aircraft, but there's no way we are going to give a contract to a European conglomerate to build a plane with secure features for our president. So the reason the 747 got the nod again comes down to four engines. If they have a problem with one or two engines, that plane can still stay in the air. That is a challenge on these twin engine planes, right? Because a 777 or a Dreamliner is a two engine jet, and those are the new you know, fuel efficient wide body aircraft. They're not selling anywhere near as many 747s. In fact, they recently cut back production on even what they had uh, initially planned to do going forward. But the size of the plane, the four engines, the fact that it needs to be outfitted with all these things, it's going to cost the taxpayers around $1.6 billion for these two aircraft because people don't realize that when Air Force One is flying, the backup plane is only 30 minutes out. So what kind of time frame are we looking at? How long will it take them to uh, finish this? You're talking about for the next president, right? Because there's no way the sitting president is going to order $1.6 billion in private aircraft, basically, for the president. And this is typical. This has always happened. In the second term, they're going to go ahead and order it so the next president's going to enjoy the brand new Air Force One, somewhere between 2019, 20, 21. Uh -huh. It depends on what they're doing. The initial investment, just to scope it out, 25 million bucks. Wow. Just to scope it out. Pricey. Yeah. Mark Murphy, thanks so I much. I want to for get one here. of those. Yeah, right. Let's go on and take a little flight. <laughs> exactly. See if we can get a ride. Thanks a lot.